The year was 1981, and a game changed a young man's life forever and shaped him into what he is today. First edition, second edition, third edition, the edition we do not name, fifth edition, and other games. Oh my god, look at that desk. Your obsession has turned into a mess, dude. Come on, fix your shit. Old dog, new tricks! Bienvenidos, and welcome to the first ever episode of Old Dog New Tricks. Today I'm going to be painting a Sarac from the box set for the undead paint set put out by Army Painter. See the picture covering up my face? Yep, that's it. I'm going to be giving it a shot. I wanted to go straight out of the box with just the box paints, but then I realized that's way too limiting. So of course I went to my plethora of paints. I knew I was going to screw that up and added a few more extra details to it and colors that didn't come with the box but you know what that's sometimes how it goes unless you get every paint you ever wanted in the same box it's never going to happen the initial idea was this was going to be a gift from my son for his birthday because the Sarak has been a reoccurring villain in his campaign that i've enjoyed for several years so proud to see my son go from being just a gamer to being the dm love it couldn't be prouder proud nerd dad alert right here I wanted to go a little bit darker instead of going with a, uh, a lighter paint scheme, which you see I've seen on videos on YouTube, plus on the box art. I wanted to go with the darker colors that are featured in the actual artwork on both the box and the Dungeon Master Guide when it was released. It's just liches or nasty, dark, dirty, dangerous things, and I didn't want to make it look like a friggin' clown. So I went with some other colors. Now, on to the video. All right, here we go. Oh, how exciting. This, this guy's painting a mini. Oh my God, I, I, I'm just riveted. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm doing an overdub. All right, so here you see me adding uh, features to the face, which, yeah, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, I'm doing a base of cold flesh on the face and the shoulder pads, just because I wanted to give it that uh, a little bit brighter look. Didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, but you know, sometimes that's how it goes. Um, I tried going over it several times afterwards with the moldy wash to give it a green look, didn't like that, went back with the cool gray and some other grays, didn't like that. Basically ended up saying, okay, I'm done and let's move on. So here I'm working on the, uh, the cloaks, which I went with a Wraith Black. Now I gotta say, I can't say enough good things about this Wraith Black. Um, didn't need a lot of watering down as you see me doing now and paint from my tray um and it flowed on well and boy i just love that dark dark blue that's in there it's not uh it's not actually a black it's more of a blue midnight blue and you know i i really love blues on uh my paint schemes just because hey i like blue but this gave it a nice contrast just because of the fact that if i had done just straight with like in a bat in black or something like that it might not have had as much depth and shadow as i like also i'm using my wonderful curve brush which i've discovered that these work great for trying to get around corners and up under cloaks and stuff like that i tend to assemble my minis and just paint them from the go instead of doing them in stages like i should but you know that's the way it goes but the midnight black, uh, the excuse me, the wraith black went on really, 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 really smooth, and only took a few coats to get a nice deep coloring. And then I was able to go back and do some more highlights, uh, use lighter colors, lighter blues. Um, because of the darkness of it, I really didn't have to do the shadows all that much. Um, so that was kind of nice, saved a step, almost like a contrast, but not quite. What I did do for um, his robes, that'll be coming up here in a minute, uh, I went with vampire garments on the, uh, the, the, the robes that are draped off of him. I forget what you would call those. Rags is what it more or less looks like. But the contrast between the wraith black and the vampire garments was phenomenal. Uh, I love the two. They work together very well, especially when you do a nice wash on them. They both get that darkened feel to them. The vampire garments, um, also the 
the paint is wonderful. A uh, little bit of watering, a little bit of um, thinning, and it just goes on uh, extra smooth. And red is easier to highlight. I just went up with an, uh, an orange. I think I used uh, Army Painters Pure Red and then uh, another lighter orange. And I used that as highlights and it blended very, very well. If I had a better camera, I would have taken better pictures and can show you, but I did take some and I got those thrown on the end. Anytime you want to take a look. All right, see the final base coats going on. Um, I got pretty good coverage. Again, I'm hoping to get another, uh, uh, I'm hoping to upgrade to a new camera. I want one to show the overall and I would love to have one that can do macro so I can get up close and you can see more or less what I'm doing. If I could find one to attach to my headset, I would definitely do that, but that would look kind of ridiculous and move around way too much because my head moves around way too much. Oh look, more minty paint, mini painting. Aren't you excited? I I'm excited, so excited. I need to get music. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Is that the curb brush? Yeah, that's still the curb brush. That actually came in handy just because I was trying to get up underneath things. Like I said, I tend to assemble the minis ahead of time. Um, just because I like having a full picture of what I'm painting before I actually jump in and start painting. Um, and that curved brush really does help get up under different things. Here's the uh, vampire garment red that I was talking about that I used for the, the rags, the garments that are hanging off of him uh, floating in the breeze as they are. Again, this was nice and smooth. Really liked the uh, coverability of this. Couldn't be happier. This this paint set gave me a lot of good stuff coming out of it. Uh, the Dracolich scales, cold flesh, bleached skull. Of course, the wraith black and the vampire garments were absolutely wonderful. Moldy wash, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that moldy wash in different projects just because it gives it such a nasty um, wash to it. So on lighter colors, it'll bring that dark green in there, almost like a, a, a fetid, rotting, nasty thing. Um, and the Cursed Blade, I didn't talk about this one. And I used it only a little bit. Um, mostly around the uh, the chain around his neck and, and uh, different highlights and jewelry. I've used it on other models for jewelry and such. Uh, the Cursed Blade Metallic is really, really nice. It's kind of that darkish brown uh, metallic that makes a really good base for just about anything you're going that isn't just straight silver. Um, my metallic silver painting usually involves uh, going with a darker silver and then building up the highlights and dry brushing on top of that. Um, but with this one, you can do it as a flat paint, uh, flat coverage, like a base paint, and then just add some highlights to it. Add a nice little wash to it, um, and it just, it pops. It really does pop. I'm very happy with this. Um, overall, this is a great paint set. And it, it, whether you're doing a Sarac or you're doing, uh, like, my next project, spoiler alert, is... Uh, Strahd mounted on Bucephalus. Um, this one's going to come in handy for a lot of that. Uh, that'll be for the next video. I'm, I'm hoping to get that done in a reasonable amount of time, but you know, all this videoing, editing, and all that fun stuff, it just, I'm not painting minis. I'm working on my computer and I'm not painting minis. And God bless me, I want to work on minis. So this will probably be the last one for about two weeks, and then I will be, uh, finishing up Bucephalus and getting that out. But I have a lot more videos planned. I have one that I'm uh, looking at, uh, another gift mini for my granddaughter who just started playing. God, she's gonna be 13 in eighth grade. I'm getting too old for this shit. Um, so I'm gonna be working on that. I don't know if I wanna show the start to finish, building it, primary, it, and all that other fun stuff. It depends on how bored you are with this actual video. Um, 
once again, you know, hey, I apologize. This is my first video. I don't know what people are going to want to watch, so I'm just kind of throwing everything out there. I've been rambling on, so I haven't been paying attention. I've now switched over to his staff. And with his staff, I used a, uh, a contrast that I picked up. It was uh, for Fire Slayer Flesh. Now, I live up in Humboldt County, and I'm surrounded by redwoods. And, and I like the woods that are more reddish in hues, just because, to me, that, that feels more like home. Uh, so I went with that as a contrast and it gave me everything I wanted out of it. Nice, beautiful depths and highlights. I really didn't have to do a lot more to this to touch it up. Um, the straps that are around the skull holding it to the staff, I used a uh, contrast of snake bite leather, which uh, again, worked perfectly. I'm, I'm falling in love with these speed paints and these, uh, these wonderful, wonderful uh, contrasts. They're just doing an amazing job. Where have you been all my life? Now we're moving on to some of the finishing touches. I'm going with a basic black around the base and around um, the helm, his helmet. Uh, I used a darker color with that, a black, and then I managed to dry brush highlight on some of the silver, but I didn't go too bright because once again, I wanted to go dark and dirty. Um, so I didn't get too much on the highlights of that one. But overall, I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. His two horns that were sticking off the side, those I uh, did an overlap. Um, once I did paint them more along the metallics, I did do use the, uh, um, the snake bite leather as a wash per se. Uh, thinned it down quite a bit and went over that so it had that wood bone um, antler feel to it without but still had some of that metallic shininess showing that you know it's not necessarily your average antler who just didn't cut them off an animal and stick them on his horns he did some stuff to it as for the gemstone that was right in the center i played with that one i had i had a lot of fun i used a bright bright silver underneath that and then to paint the gem, I actually used the technic, uh, technical paint, uh, Blood for the Blood God. Gave it that glossy, deep red shine, but with that metallic backing, it made it look more like it was an actual jewel. Um, and here we have me completely not paying attention to the fact that I walked away from the, from the painting. What I'm doing, I have no idea. And we're gonna have to fix that. Oh, no, oh, here we are, here we're back. Okay, so back with more of the contrast. I think this is the snake bite leather that I was doing on, uh, on the straps. Can you tell these are my first ever videos? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. But isn't that the way it's supposed to be? You just have fun. Don't pay attention to the details, just have fun. Yeah, once I get an established, dedicated space, hopefully there's going to be a lot less of this. Oh, what is he painting? All I see is his hand. We need to fix this. Um, yeah, I'm still playing around with the setup. I mean, got, I'm working on a budget, working on a confined space. I've got a one bedroom apartment here with my wife and I've got my space. She's got her space and I just make do with what I got. But, you know, they say practice makes perfect. I say bullshit. Practice makes improvement. And that's all I've been looking for. I just want to get better at what I'm doing. I thought it was great, but you know what? I learn new things every day watching these guys like Scott and John and Duncan. And they're just, yeah, where have you guys been all my life? Although I do think in hindsight, if I had had YouTube growing up, that kind of would have blown my mind. I don't even know how I would have dealt with the internet growing up in the 80s. Holy cow. Um, but, you know, having books and pictures show you how to paint is okay. Uh, you, uh, it goes into detail, gives you higher resolution photos, um, that kind of stuff. But you know what? It, it, without the instruction or the tutorial behind it, 
someone actually teaching you. It's it's always been hard for me to learn how to paint or learn how to do anything just reading out of a book. I, I'm very much a show me kind of guy. You show me how to do it and I can, I'll copy it and do it. But if you give me a book, it's gonna take me 10 times longer to get it done. So Sarah Rack is coming along. I did post some okay pictures at the end. Uh, once again, I am trying to upgrade. Um, but yeah, he's coming along very nice. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. What am I doing? What am I doing? At this point, I think I'm just doing all the touch-ups and finishing it up because this, uh, when I filmed this, it was like two days to, to deadline there on the, uh, getting it for my son's birthday. I wanted to finish it before his uh, big weekend game because we meet every Sunday family and friends well we're all family now at this point um and he was getting ready to do the uh the big boss fight cliffhanger with the lich uh actually was zaz tam but he used uh, a sararak as the mini just because you know he really liked it that was kind of cool um epic epic battle but this is where i started doing a wash and i thinned it down oh look another camera angle this is me experimenting uh i did a black wash but i thinned it out because I didn't want it to be heavy, heavy, heavy uh, uh, wash. I just wanted to get some of the, the darker features to pop, let the color shine through a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're down to the finishing touches. Um, I'm doing the gemstone again off camera like a dumbass. Um, doing the touch-ups to the skull and arguing with myself over what I should do with the face other than, you know, burn it off the model and forget it even happened. But hey, you know, these things happen. The end result turned out good, and uh, for the most part, everything was okay. Uh, one of the troubles I did have earlier starting on is the fact that these sets do not come with instructions on how to assemble the minis. And, you know, these are not very intuitive in some cases. So I had a couple of problems, and I had to use some, uh, some green stuff to fill in the gaps, because there were some good gaps, and... Uh, Eventually, I had to use green stuff to get the head to stay on, which that was kind of a fun aspect. But uh, overall, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning how to put these models better together. Um, and the next one I'm doing is a uh, Frameworks uh, elf wizard that I'm doing for my granddaughter. Um, I kind of like uh, the options that they give with that, all the different extra parts. So it's going to be interesting to see how that falls out. But yeah. It's towards the end of it. Oh, for the base. I didn't even talk about the base. Uh, I decided to go with like a tan stone or a sandstone for the base just because I wanted to give it that temple Egyptian-y kind of feeling, uh, not just straight gray stone or um, straight up asphalt. All right. Well, thank you for watching and uh, hope I didn't bore you. I'm going to be working on these. Put it in the comments whether or not you want them longer, shorter. You know, I need to cut things out. What do you what what you think is a waste of your time as a viewer and a waste of my time as an editor? I'm looking forward to the comments and as usual, you know, like, subscribe, please share the video. I'm looking to gain some subscribers and get the word out. If people enjoy my videos. I want a whole bunch of people to enjoy my if they're boring as hell, forget it even happened and don't tell anybody. Yeah, got to work on a new camera so I can get some better focus. Not to mention, uh, hopefully by the time this actually gets all edited together, I will have some music in the background. That's all I got to say about that. Well, there you have it. My attempt at painting a Sararak from the box set. It turned out a lot like I wanted it to. I wanted to go dark just like the cover of the Dungeon Master Guide and the cover of the box set. Uh, downsides, I hated the face. Face turned out horrible. I'm not happy with it. My son was happy with it. But you know what? That was all that matters because that was his birthday gift. And we ended up kicking a Sararak's ass. It was very nice. Almost died. But... 
That's what happens when you take on a ledge. So that's all I have for this time. Until the next time, remember, those minis ain't going to paint themselves. Ciao. Thank you.